All right. Well, hi and uh, welcome. And uh, my name is Tyler Dirksen. I'm here from uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm a cl cloud software developer for uh, Imaginate Resources. And I work on a variety of different cloud projects, including um, some that are from different platforms other than .NET. And so what I'm actually going to be talking to you about today is uh, uh, Windows Azure websites. And so that's my information there. And uh, you can get a hold of me at uh, tylergd at outlook.com, or uh, you can access my website at tylerdirksen.com. <clears throat> so what I want to go through with you is uh, just kind of give you a look at, uh, uh, at websites and where they kind of fit into this whole um, kind of ecosystem. Um, so essentially, you have a variety of different options um, when choosing your you know, Windows Azure uh, platform to build on top of. You have virtual machines, which is a fairly new feature, or well, new in the same time as websites. Um, so virtual machines, you actually have a fair amount of responsibilities that are that you still need to manage. Um, and uh, so with virtual machines, uh, along with your application and your data, you have to manage firewall rules, virtual network policies, and and different things like that. And the kind of largest or the most complex for me um, is that you have to manage your uh, your operating system version and upgrade your operating system and, and all of the actual software on that OS. Um, so the next kind of one in the line, in line uh, is uh, cloud services. And cloud services takes away kind of the operating system portion, which I would say is kind of the largest. And uh, so it's more of a platform as a service kind of piece um, that you could use uh, to gain a little bit more control. So you actually have some access to the underlying machine and you can do some firewall rules and, and even some virtual networking if you like. Um, but um, the underlying operating system that the cloud service runs on top of is managed by the Microsoft Data Center. So um, that being said, websites is kind of the smallest piece of, uh, of responsibility that you um, can get as far as Windows Azure compute options. Um, so with websites, you basically just focus on the application and the data. You have some um, kind of ability to do configuration for things like uh, different hosts that you're listening on and different things like that, um, but you're basically hosted on top of IIS and you don't have a whole lot of control over um, the actual IIS system or the underlying machine that you're running on top of. Um, you may even be shared uh, in a shared system with a variety of other websites that are running on IIS. So why would you actually choose Windows Azure websites? So Azure websites allow you to start very simple. Um, the base rate for Windows Azure website is free. Um, and this isn't like kind of a trial period or anything like that. There's actually a free option for websites that you can take advantage of at any time. Um, and then you can scale up to a shared system or a reserve system and have multiple machines that are load balanced uh, to run your website. And uh, we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, but the one of the main things is you can actually start simple and start off with a free model. <clears throat> with Windows Azure websites, you can actually start with uh, a variety of different web platforms and languages. Um, you can go anything from classic ASP um, to Node.js, which is a fairly new um, platform that uh, people are building websites with. And uh, so um, you can also develop your applications using Windows, OS X, or Linux. And I'm actually going to be showing a command line utility that uh, is um, is, con is the interoperable utility that you can use for all of those uh, client machines. Um, and as we'll see in a number of the demos, you can go live very, very easily. So the endpoints for Windows Azure websites are public endpoints, and it's very easy to set up your own domain names for the endpoints and create blogs and WordPress sites and different things like that on the fly. It's very, very, very easy to do, and, and you can basically deploy live in seconds. So. This uh, particular presentation is actually going to be um, utilizing a lot of demos. So what I'm actually going to do right now is uh, kind of set up um, a demonstration of uh, a Windows Azure website and kind of show you what the portal is going to look like. Uh, we're going to deploy a regular classic ASP site. I'm just going to write some simple message to the screen. And then we're actually going to deploy a nice new ASP.NET Web MVC4 site. Um, and kind of show you how easy it is to kind of go from one to the other or do some fairly simple deployments. So let's get into that. 
So this is the Windows Azure portal. If you haven't seen it before, it's fairly easy to use and it's built on HT, uh, HTML5 um, portal. So I can actually click on new and under the compute options, these are the, the options that I um, was talking about before. I have website as one of these options and I can say create. So I'm actually just gonna create a new one for you here, SB2, and it's gonna be in West US. So that's creating a new website for me. And uh, um, hopefully if this demo goes pretty well, it will finish creating within seconds and there it is. Um, so I can actually click on the link and I have a public website that just has a splash screen right away. How long did that take? Probably about five seconds or so. Um, and it was really, really quick. So here I actually have an existing site called Hello ASP. Um, so what would I actually do in order to uh, deploy to this site? I'm actually just going to use my friendly neighborhood HD or, uh, FTP client and a little notepad window. So here I'm just going to write out some uh, ASP code. Um, this isn't going to be true HTML, but like so. And save that. I'm just going to take it from uh, here. It's going to make sure, yep, yeah, I do have that information. I'm just going to drop it into my FTP um, server for triple W root that is attached to my website here. Um, so I should be able to actually click on dashboard and click on my public link and maybe just refresh. And there you go. You actually have a hello world that's built with, uh, with classic ASP. Right. It's really, really easy to do because I can um, deploy to my site using um, an FTP server, as well as a variety of other um, deployment uh, technologies. And I'll go into the full list at the end, but we're going to actually be going through a bunch of demos um, that highlight these different technologies there. Um, so that was kind of the first one where you can just kind of start really, really basic with uh, ASP.NET or ASP or flat HTML site and using um, uh, FTP transfer to upload your site. Um, very, very easy to do. So let's kind of get one level above. So right now, I actually have a, uh, sorry, Visual Studio window um, where I've created a brand new vanilla um, MVC4 application. And um, it actually just so happens we call it MVC application 4. And so I can actually just modify this to so say, uh, hello, ASP.NET MVC4 like so. And so I say I wanted to publish this website to uh, my Windows Azure uh, website. So I can actually just right click on the project and click on publish. And this is just the regular web publishing um, that's straight out of the box in Visual Studio. So I can actually import a publish profile, which I've already downloaded from here. So actually, I'll show you how I did that. Um, so this is my website um, dashboard. And you can there's actually just a quick little link here that says download publish profile. Um, under the quick glance uh, kind of options here. And so I've downloaded that published profile and I'm actually gonna import it into this wizard. And it puts in all the information, including my hash password and everything like that, um, and my destination URL and a bunch of other information. Um, so at this point I can just hit publish. So it's building my uh, website in release and uh, publishing it to the Windows Azure um, site. Kind of while this is happening, uh, I'll kind of talk about um, what's involved with this. So essentially what it's doing is it's taking the published profile and taking the data from the published profile and it's adding its own profile, pub XML file, um, basically to my source. And so I can actually check that file into source control if I want to and use it for doing deployments or updates. Other people can download the source control, change the site and upload it. It's very, very easy to use. So hopefully this looks like it is done now. Oops, wrong side. And uh, so here, um, rather than that, you know, hello ASP thing, I actually have a full blown ASP.NET MVC4 site. Um, so very, very easy to get going. And, uh, uh, you know, it just was that quick to uh, create a brand new website and uh, start working here. So I know that, uh, you know, using FTP and using Visual Studio is not really the only way people. Um, build websites nowadays. So what I want to get into, oops, wrong window, 
is uh, another demonstration that they're kind of calling modern apps or kind of modern deployments and applications. Um, so what I want to go through with in this demonstration is uh, the ability to actually use Git um, and uh, common command line tools in order to build um, and deploy a website. So here, um, I've opened my uh, Git bash window um, and I've installed the Windows Azure command line interface. And so all you really need to do to install the Windows Azure command line interface is install the Node package manager and then uh, with the Node.js plugins and then type in npm install, oops, not install, install Azure uh, CLI. And then you can add a global flag so that all the users of your machine uh, uh, of your machine can actually use the Azure CLI. But what does that actually do? Because I've already installed it um, on my machine. So if I type in Azure, you can see all of the command line interfaces with this nice little ASCII art on, on the top here um, and uh, for Windows Azure. So what I want, what, so what do I, uh, uh, I want to do starting off here? Um, I want to create a new Windows Azure site. So I can actually type in Azure um, site create and I don't want to just create a normal site. I want to create a site that uses Git um, and uses a Git repository. So I'm going to put in an option of dash dash Git there. And I'm already in the uh, C projects cloud survey, which is a kind of a survey site that I already have code for and I want to um, upload. So I'm going to name the site survey and it's actually going to default to West US, which is where, where I want it to be. Um, and it actually created a brand new website for me. If I go into the background here, um, I can see that in the full listing, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna try and refresh this page so I can see the website that was created. Yep, there it is, survey. So it actually created the survey site and you, as you notice kind of at the bottom here, um, I now have a master branch um, uh, uh, kind of label on, on my local uh, folder structure, which means that it also um, turned this folder into a Git repository. Um, so in order to actually add my code to Git, I can say Git add um, dot, and then git commit. Uh, and then my message for committing is going to be initial commit, like so. And uh, and then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say git. Um, I'm just kind of put this in the center here. I'm going to say git push. Azure master. So what this is actually doing is it's uh, pushing my code to a remote repository that was already set up here um, uh, called Azure and it's pushing my master branch. So I've already set up my deployment credentials um, with my website here. Um, which is also very easy to do with the portal. And what it's actually doing is it's logged into the Git repository. It's authenticated rather with the Git repository um, online. And uh, it's deploying my website up into the cloud. Um, so you can see writing objects. It's a fairly large site, um, updating branch mad master. Um, now you can actually see some of the information coming out of, uh, of Git is that it's building the site. It, it's successfully installing um, different uh, NuGet repositories that needed to be uh, downloaded from NuGet um, and uh, copying all files to the public location, published location, and it successfully deployed my site. Um, so uh, what I can actually do from here, there's a couple of really kind of fancy uh, uh, command lines that you can do with the Azure command line here. So you can say Azure site portal like so. I guess I might, uh, they may have changed that, sir. Maybe this one. Let's try that one. There. So I can actually browse to my website 
um, here on uh, Windows Azure. But actually, before I do that, um, I want to kind of go into the site in the portal and I actually have this kind of deployments um, uh, kind of section here. And you can see that I have the active Git deployment and it was from initial commit. This is the actual commit ID and it's deployed by Tyler D and everything like that. Um, you can, uh, you know, get a, a Git URL for um, the code that's actually deployed here. Um, and like it acts as a full-fledged Git repository. And you can see my uh, my website is, is set up for me here. Um, and I already have uh, the SQL database set up, which actually happened automatically usually. And uh, so let's see if I can log in. Yes. So I already had a survey going. So, uh, oops. So I want to actually create a new survey. And I can create a new question. And change it from text to Boolean. Um, and then if I actually click on this link, then I can see my survey. I can submit the survey. And so I have a fully functioning website that I've actually sourced um, from my um, Git repository. And uh, so um, some of the things that uh, this particular um, site is showcasing uh, may be kind of apparent, uh, you know, it, it kind of went right by when we were building and deploying the site, but this site uses a lot of newer technologies like SignalR um, and JavaScript technologies like uh, Knockout.js and uh, um, and different things and client-side frameworks and stuff like that. So all of those are, you know, you can you can deploy them to Windows Azure using Git or TFS or FTP or web deployments. It makes it very, very easy and flexible to actually take your site, your content, and all those great technologies you're using to, you know, create your website and, uh, and deploy them to Windows Azure. So I essentially have a full functioning survey site um, and I can actually get statistics on the, the different surveys being taken and everything like that. Um, so my next kind of question to you is what happens now when your website becomes very, very popular? So essentially I have my survey site um, and I got my uh, dashboard that gives me a pretty good idea of you know what's happening on my site as far as like CPU time, um, HTTP server errors, and uh, number of requests and things like that. So right now, um, because this is a, a fairly chatty client server site, you know, I'm getting about 62 requests um, for performing some operations because of signal alarm, because things are kind of running back and forth um, through Ajax calls and everything like that. Um, so I can actually go into a little more detail and some monitoring statistics and, uh, you know, get some more information or even add a number of different kinds of metrics, um, you know, HTTP 401 error counts, um, and uh, and different things like that, HTTP redirects, um, and even successes and, and stuff like that. If I want to kind of um, break down um, what's what's happening on my website in a, in a uh, kind of a you know a very unique fashion. Um, you also have the ability to do a lot of configuration on your site. You can even add uh, different app settings um, that you can pull from the app settings shared class in your website. So if you actually had something that you, you know, it's, you're using an open source site, so you don't really want to um, include keys for some of the, uh, um, for some of the uh, other, you know, third party services that your site uses or, you know, Facebook keys or, or Twitter keys and different things like that. You don't want to include those in your config files, but you actually want to use them in your website. Um, so you can actually add them to your app settings values um, and use them directly in code and not have to worry about those kind of slipping into the wrong hands. So there's a lot of configuration capabilities um, in here, including some Git um, kind of stuff, trigger URLs, um, branch to deploy, you can change that to dev or, you know, if you have kind of a test site, you can uh, set that up so that, you know, a certain branch will actually feed to your test site um, and, uh, and you know, work with that. Um, now, even though I was showcasing the whole um, Git 
functionality as uh, making the website a Git repository, um, you can actually set up a, a Git deployment that happens from GitHub or Bit, uh, Bitbucket, I believe, or CodePlex, the Git portion of that. Um, or even if you don't want to use Git repositories, you can use uh, TFS online um, and other uh, you know, tools, anything that uses web deploy or anything that uses FTP deployments um, can be used to deploy websites to, to Windows Azure. So, um, so now that we've kind of looked at a little bit of the diagnostics and the monitoring for, for this website, um, you know, back to kind of my original question, what, uh, what happens when you, um, you know, start getting very, very popular, everyone's starting to use this site. Um, so right now I'm on my free website mode and, uh, and I can't really scale any sort of instances on my free mode, but I can go to my scaled mode and I have the ability to kind of scale up for different instances. Um, so here I can kind of scale up to two instances of shared and hit save. Uh, yeah, it has a billing impact because it's not free. And, uh, and it actually reconfigures my site um, to go into shared mode. Um, now, the one main, there's a couple of main differences between free and shared. One of them I kind of outlined here in that you can actually scale this up and down. Um, with free, you can't really, you're kind of just stuck with the one instance that's, uh, that's kind of like a shared instance, but there's only one. Um, but when you switch up the shared mode, you get the ability to scale up as well as there's a couple of options that are added when you start configuring things. So you can actually say manage domains. And if I wanted this survey to be on my, um, you know, my domain, I can say survey uh, dot Dot com and you know add it to my site. Obviously, this is not going to work because I don't have the correct DNS record set up for that. But it's very very easy to do. Um, you know, you just configure your A records or your DNS C name records um, to point at this website, and then you can automatically set up uh, your domain name there. That option is not available when you're using free. It only becomes available when you're using shared. Now, what kinds of things change when you switch over to reserved? Now, with reserved, you can actually set an instance size. So, before we were kind of doing a shared quarter on a on a VM shared with other um, other websites, other IAS instances, um, but now we can actually choose and say small, medium, or large. And uh, again, we still have this slider to say, okay, well, my site is going to get hammered, hammered, hammered. So, I'm going to have um, ten four core, seven gig memory boxes. Um, to, to run my site. Um, I don't really need that in, uh, much on here, so I'm gonna kind of change this to small and, uh, and then move forward with that. So essentially we have a few different options as far as scalability for, for you and your site, and you can actually you know, start easy, start simple with the free mode, and then very, very easily switch to a shared mode like I had done here, where I now have two instances of shared um, and, uh, yep, let's see. If I go over to monitor, uh, yeah, pretty much it, it, all the monitoring stays pretty much the same because you're on shared instances. Um, um, but you can basically see um, how much CPU time you've been using. You, obviously, you're going to be using more CPU time if you're on multiple instances and different things like that. So that's kind of the, the scalability options. I'm just going to switch back to um, some slides just to show you a little bit more about what that really means. So like I mentioned, um, this is going to highlight a couple of the different options, um, but along with the shared option is the free option, right? So um, essentially when you're when you're talking kind of technical in this sense, as far as shared or reserved, the free option is the shared option, right? You have a few less option, uh, uh, you know, you don't have the capability of doing scaling and you don't have the capability of doing your own domain name, but the hosting model is the same as the shared hosting model. So, um, you know, hopefully I won't get any angry emails or anything saying like, hey, you were missing free on this slide. It's, it's there, it's just under shared. Um, so essentially, the shared model means that you, uh, your website is actually exists on uh, a server with a variety or a number of other websites. And you can actually scale it up, but you're still scaling up in a kind of a pool of other sites. You're probably on a separate machine, but you're still sharing space um, with uh, other sites um, in kind of the shared ecosystem here. Now switch over to reserved. 
um, and go over to one here. So now the shared stuff goes away and you actually get a full PC all to yourself. Um, and uh, and a full PC for the websites that are in the same data center and subscription as this website. So um, you can actually, when you scale up reserved, you're not really scaling, you know, the amount of instances that are receiving information from are, are, are on the load balancer. You're actually also scaling up VMs, right? So now um, the load balancer will round robin um, send HTTP requests to two VMs. Um, on reserved instances. And so this is kind of highlighting the fact that um, when you switch over to reserved, you're actually sharing the instances with your own other reserved sites. Um, so that can be a very good thing as far as utilization goes, um, but uh, you know, it may mean that you have to kind of watch a little more closely if one of your sites is taking a lot more memory or processing power um, away from some of the other ones, or if you need to scale up and down accordingly. Um, but just know that you know when you're when you're say, talking about a reserved instances instance, and you actually have in this case three websites, um, and you switch them all to reserved, and you scale them up to two, you're not paying for um, you know six VMs. Um, you're actually just paying for two VMs, and uh, you know the machines are actually sharing these these two virtual machines. So that's kind of how that works. Um, So before I, well, yeah, I, I guess I want to continue on with the, the, the kind of rich portal experience here um, and, uh, and kind of move away from how to actually deploy your, you know, your own code base onto uh, Windows Azure websites, which is very easy. What happens if you actually just want to use um, kind of an existing product on Windows Azure? So um, one of the options that I have when I can say, uh, you know, create website is actually, I can say from gallery. So Windows Azure actually has a variety of, uh, of different engines, which uh, the icons are not really loading right now. I'm just gonna kind of reload this page. So Windows Azure contains uh, a number of, uh, uh, of kind of canned gallery um, websites that you can deploy and then start using right away. So the web is full of these different solutions for doing like um, forums, blogs, um, e-commerce websites and different things like that. And, and uh, the Windows Azure Gallery contains a number of them. So uh, let's see if this starts working now. Here we go. So we have, you know, if we go through all of them, there's a bunch of different ones, but let's just kind of look at some of the different blogging engines. We got Drupal, Blog Engine, Das Blog, Incentive, Orchard, Umbraco, and the one that I kind of want to uh, showcase is a WordPress blog. Um, now, if you'll notice that uh, for those that are like thinking that um, Windows Azure websites is all about .NET, it's all about ASP.NET and, and uh, MBC and different things like that, um, a lot of these options is especially in the CMS and e-commerce and everything like that. They're actually PHP sites as well. And a few of these options are actually Node.js sites. Um, so you can very, very easily deploy a number of different technologies onto um, Windows Azure websites, as I probably mentioned before. Um, so let's see here, uh, a new blog. And I'm gonna create a new MySQL database. Um, again, don't really have to use the uh, regular um, Microsoft SQL database. I'm using a new MySQL database and it's just gonna be called a bunch of guck. Um, I'm gonna to agree to the terms for that uh, ClearDB um, has for me. ClearDB is actually just a partner of uh, Microsoft and Windows Azure that provides the endpoints for the MySQL databases. But the MySQL databases are actually hosted in the same data center as your, as your stuff. So they are very, very fast. Um, so I created a brand new um, WordPress blog. And uh, this is also kind of under free mode to start. And so free mode doesn't really limit you to your own code. You can actually deploy very, very rich, um, you know, applications to uh, a free website um, and uh, start using them basically for nothing. Um, and then, you know, kind of build up and start deploying to your, your blog, changing uh, information on your blog. And you're the one who gets to choose, you know, when that blog actually goes live. Um, so it's taking a little bit longer to create, I believe, because of the uh, MySQL database, but I believe it is done here. So um, 
my site has been created and I can go to the dashboard and click on my site URL. And hopefully no one has done this before me. Uh, let's see. Other GD out. Um, so I'm basically setting up my WordPress site, and I'm not sure exactly how long WordPress takes to do that. Shouldn't be terribly long. All right, let's log in. You know what? I kind of forgot admin. That's what it was. Admin. Let's log into that. So just like that, in a couple minutes, I have a fully functioning, uh, you know, WordPress blog. Um, and if I actually go back to my site here, um, I can configure the scale of my blog over to shared. Um, with one instance and save that and also just start um, configuring, uh, you know, different domain names for my site. Um, so it's very, very easy um, to get going with uh, other sites like WordPress. And like I said, there's a variety of other things um, in the gallery for you to use. Um, even different e-commerce solutions, uh, you know, uh, like Mojo Portal or NOP Commerce, um, different things like that. Um, for you to use some of the more recent newer ones um, you can deploy a media wiki and uh, a couple of other um, uh, newer CMS I think composite one is a fairly new CMS device um, application that you can deploy on Windows Azure here and so all of those these have been uh, provided by um, you know different publishers and partners for Windows Azure and they're fully supported um, on this platform and so you know feel feel free to you know use your Windows Azure account and start creating some free sites um, you know it's a great place to actually try out a bunch of these different platforms because you know most of the time um, what what you can create is actually uh, you know for nothing or for free um, so just to pop back to some of the gallery or the the slides here um, so as you've noticed we don't really we're not really constrained to uh, .NET or ASP.NET um, there's a variety of different frameworks that you can run with Windows Azure websites um, everything from ASP to Node.js um, which would include um, you know regular Microsoft.NET PHP and other ones and uh, it's kind of like a bring your own runtime kind of scenario um, whereas if you needed other platforms and languages and systems that are actually built on top of these platforms, you can do that. So for example, you know, PHP, you can have a WordPress site, which is basically a platform on, in, on its own, almost with a language of its own. And there's a variety. We only went through a few of them um, so far. Uh, we went through most of them, actually, but there's a ver variety of um, supported publishing methods. So you don't have to use a specific tool. You don't have to even have a Windows machine um, in order to uh, do publishing to Windows Azure. You can use FTP from basically anywhere. Um, you can use a hosted TFS server and TFS also supports Git repository or TFS online also supports Git repositories. Now you can kind of go that way um, uh, and uh, doing web deploy. There's a variety of different technologies and and, uh, and you know build systems that support web deploy um, and also you can actually set up the website as um, a fully functioning git repository so you can actually have a hosted git repository at your disposal and you know publish um, two websites when you uh, push changes into this uh, remote git repository and as you've noticed as well we have a you know variety of publisher or partners um, through Windows Azure some of them we've seen as far as the gallery images like WordPress and Braco or Drupal um, and other ones are kind of sitting behind the scenes, like ClearDB providing MySQL databases. SendGrid is also there in the uh, Azure marketplace um, for you to set up, um, you know, uh, SMTP servers to uh, send email out. Um, very, very easy to do. In fact, I'll just do a quick little demonstration of, uh, of a lot of that stuff here. Um, 
let's see, where's my, there it is. I can add some add-ons here. So um, here I can very, very easily say, where's send grid? There it is. Um, again, free SendGrid account. Oops. So this might take a little bit, but essentially you can pick and choose um, a lot of the uh, other vendors and, and, and different other companies that um, publish uh, applications and services through the Windows Azure Marketplace. And the Windows Azure Marketplace is a fairly new concept. Um, and, uh, you know, while I'm on the topic of kind of new stuff, um, I can actually go to my survey site um, and, can, or, sorry, scale my survey site up to a reserved instance. Just a small one will do. Yes. And so this is something that I kind of um, forgot to go over because it's uh, new as of a couple of weeks ago. Um, let's see. It's under, there it is. So what I can actually do now, um, again, as of a couple of weeks ago, is add a couple of endpoints. So I'm going to say my homepage um, endpoint and I can actually test this endpoint from a number of locations um, you know like Chicago, Dublin um, or like Hong Kong for example and uh, and I can save that and so what I will actually get as part of my uh, Windows Azure um, metrics is uh, you know request times and, and everything um, on that particular page um, from those locations. Um, so I don't know if it will be showing up quite yet. Yeah, so uh, some of this information is not really uh, coming through quite yet. Um, but eventually, you know, you'll get some uh, uh, information coming from, you know, how how does your site perform um, from the different locations that, we, uh, that we've configured um, in the monitoring portal. And so that's, you know, brand new, couple of weeks old kind of uh, uh, systems here. And uh, it's something that is really, really interesting and it's gonna be improved upon in, in future releases. All right. So like I was saying, variety of different uh, partners and uh, people that are involved with uh, making the uh, Windows Azure websites experience a lot more easy and uh, and capable and, and having all these services available on Windows Azure is very, very powerful. So in conclusion, just kind of run and wrap up this talk. Um, the main focus of Windows Azure websites is start um, simple, code smart and go live. So essentially um, it gives you a really, really great platform to, to start basic and start with a free site and, and then work your way up. Um, and, uh, you know, being able to code smart code on the platform that you're used to, you don't really have to adopt any other, um, you know, new platforms like ASP.NET if you don't want to, um, or you can take a look at some of the brand new ones like Node.js um, and, and go with that. And then go live as well. So you can actually take your site and make it public. And the, the you know, the underlying structure of the entire website's platform is built around taking your website to live. So like, a, and, and just kind of to go over this again, um, a little bit more information about this. You can have 10 free websites on your account um, and uh, just so you don't kind of go nuts with it. Um, and uh, you can scale up your sites to shared sites to incorporate load balancing and different things like that. Um, uh, websites have shared storage across instances. So unlike cloud services, which is more of a platform as a service uh, uh, offering, that uh, you know you don't have persistent VM and v, uh, virtual machines. You do have a persistent structure that's uh, uh, shared across your instances um, and different things like that. CodeSmart, use the platforms that you're used to. 
Um, you know, right now there's a few platforms that you can run on uh, uh, Windows Azure websites, and that number that list is actually going to be growing fairly soon, um, and including some of the other uh, other platforms that are missing from there. But um, so you know, stay tuned rather to uh, to kind of um, you know some of the new platforms that are going to be coming out for um, Azure websites. You have a variety of options of some of the other components that you have at your disposal, um, and you can deploy and, and code from, you know, your chosen uh, client, whether it be Windows, um, OS X, or Linux, using the CLI tools. And then, for the last but not least, go live. You can actually use Git, FTP, Web Deploy, TFS, um, you know, a lot of different, um, you know, deployment mechanisms to rapidly take your site live and, and, and make changes to your site and, uh, and keep going forward with, uh, with the site. So what are the next steps after you know, seeing all this, this, uh, great, these great features for Windows Azure websites? Um, go to aka.ms DM get Azure to, uh, to start your Azure 90 day free trial. And uh, don't worry about uh, you know, spending any money on the trial. Um, there's a spending cap limit on the account, so you won't be charged anything. Um, and for a lot of the other more specific details and technical details, um, you can take a look at the Windows Azure virtual workshops like Cloud Variations, Building connect Connected Apps with Windows Azure, and migrating existing apps to Windows Azure. Um, you know, when you're dealing with web applications, migration is fairly easy, but if you have an underlying database that may be on a data structure that's not on Windows Azure yet, um, then, then you might need to look at that. But there are a few... Um, other providers like ClearDB that do provide other services for Windows Azure. So just take a look before you think about uh, doing the migration. And then also, last but not least, one of the really great, great uh, resources um, for presentations, demonstrations, code, and, and pretty much anything is the Windows Azure Training Kit. So you can actually download it at, at that at aka.ms, DM Azure TK. Um, and I hope you guys have... Um, you know, gotten a ton of information on uh, Windows Azure websites, and you can go right now to you know WindowsAzure.com and uh, start building your sites um, with the free model and scale them up, and you know get yourself on the internet with a blog or or any sort of site. Um, and it's very very easy to use, and it's incredibly powerful and scalable. So um, yeah, thanks very much for watching my talk here, and uh, I will see you soon.